In this tutorial, I wanted to cover how um, appearances work in PhotoView 360. So, first thing um, I'll do is open up this this old part. I'll get this message saying that there's a that this is a pre-2009 file. So, uh, basically, I won't get any appearances because it doesn't have any. I'll just get colors mapped over. Uh, so, to begin applying appearances, you simply open up the appearance dialog, um, and uh, you just drag and drop. So, um, from the preview window over to the graphics area, drag and drop, you see it update. So the way that you control what is being affected um, is by this toolbar here. This is sort of uh, this is what we call a reference selection filter. So, uh, because part is currently selected, when I drag and drop, anything which is the part underneath the mouse will get that appearance. So these are all unique parts. I'll drag and drop and um, You'll see all these parts update with whatever appearance I've, I've dropped. If I were to switch to face, drag and drop, only the face underneath that mouse will get affected. So similarly, it works like that for bodies. Um, in this case, I don't have a uh, any multi-body parts, so it won't do anything. But uh, that's how the selection filter works. Now, if, let's say you wanted this red part, to actually be something else, um, you would switch to part mode, drag and drop, and you'll see that went to green. Now the key thing here is you lost blue, and that's because in PhotoView it is a history-based system, uh, which is a bit different than SolidWorks. So SolidWorks would have noticed that that face belonged to that part, and it would have kept that blue, uh, but PhotoView being history-based, it just updates to the last thing that you dragged and dropped. So the last thing to cover is this uh, appearance filter, which um, is a bit different and may not work quite as you uh, think it does. So uh, we'll explain exactly how it works. Um, so essentially, uh, if I were to jump over into SolidWorks here and take a look at some appearance assignments, um, I've got this part here. I will uh, drag and drop black high gloss plastic onto some of these buttons and I'm doing this individually meaning notice that I'm I'm not pre-selecting everything I'm just dragging and dropping black high gloss plastic in this case four separate times so if I compare that to what happens if I were to say pick these three components first and then apply black high gloss plastic to all of them at the same time which is done just by a double click now or or um, yeah so just double click or use that use this add button up there and you've got black high gloss plastic on those three things those three components and if you look at the render manager if you have photoworks added in you'll actually um, see this a little bit better black high gloss plastic is assigned to that component assigned to that component assigned to that component and to that one and it's they're all unique yet this instance of black high gloss plastic is actually attached to all three of these components and it's because I did that all at one time so if I were to save this hop back over into photo view <coughs> and uh, open up this model <coughs> I've got my uh, appearance uh, selection filter selected <coughs> I'll just zoom in here um, so we can maybe put some appearances on here and uh, yeah, bring this up. So basically, with appearance selected, I will say drag and drop this beige onto this button, and you'll notice that's the only thing that changed. Um, none of the other black components did. Now, in contrast, if I drop it onto this part, You'll notice that the other joystick and um, controller knob there in the center all changed together. And that's because they were all applied black high gloss plastic at one time while I was in SolidWorks. So that's how the appearance filter actually uh, works and hopefully is a bit clearer now.